Uh, tonight's session is uh, for educational purposes only and merely ideas given by Martrez. Nothing stated during this Zoom session should be taken as an indication to buy or sell anything. Uh, nothing stated in this Zoom session should be seen as an investment advice. If investment advice is needed, I ask that you please contact a registered financial advisor or fiduciary. With that being said, I'm going to turn over the stage to Martrez so he can get started. Martrez, you there? Appreciate it, King. You hear me? All right. What's good, people? How y'all doing today? I'm Martrez. I'm Martrez. Um, <clears throat> call me Trez. Call me Carter, Crypto Carter, whatever you want to call me. But um, basically, once I got, when I got a Bitcoin <clears throat> back in, I don't know, 2007-ish, when Bitcoin was booming, um, the way I got in, but first let me ask, let me go back. Anybody, anybody um, into cryptocurrency or know about crypto, cryptocurrency? So we can know how far we're going to go. Is everybody new? I got a little bit of crypto from 2016, 2017 that I've been holding on, holding on to. Okay. So you got around the time. I, I got it. So mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, I have a little bit of crypto um, holdings. I got some Ethereum and some XRP and a little bit of Bitcoin, not a lot. All right. Yeah, I, I've been dollar cost averaging for several months on Fetch, uh, Mana, XRP, um, Harmony, and um, it's another coin, I forgot, um, VeChain. Okay. Oh, we got some pros in here, huh? Oh, yeah. I also have Cardano. I like Cardano. <laughs> That's it. Well, a little bit about myself, right? I, um, like I said, I got into it around 16, 17. Um, but the first time when I got into it, right, you know, you know how you see this stuff around and saying, I'm going I'm to basically take your, take your money. And, you know, it was like some type of, 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 of program. And it was like, they're going to take our money and make more Bitcoin from it. So we did it. BitConnect. Bit, was it BitConnect? No, it was, uh, I think it's USI Tech. You heard of them? Yeah, I remember them too. Yep. All right. <laughs> so you know where I'm going with this. So USI Tech, basically, that's when I got into Bob with them. But come to find out, it was some type of Ponzi scheme. You know, it was a gift and curse to it, though. So, um. One, I mean, you know, I got my money took, but you know, I think a lot of, a lot of them got uh, the uh, owners was, you know, some legal issues or something going on. So they, I think they got in trouble with the whole uh, little scam. But what I did learn, I learned what cryptocurrency was. I learned what Bitcoin was. Um, I learned the underlying technologies behind the, the, the crypto coins. Um, and I started digging deeper into them. And I realized like, it's a lot of coins out there that can really change society if you really do your research on them. Um, start digging into the white papers, you know, learning about it. Um, and if you don't know what white papers are, basically white papers is the, you know, sort of like, sort of like stocks, right? So you got stocks and you have the fundamentals of, of the stocks. So the white paper is more like the fundamentals of, of that. So it tells you all about that, that technology, that technology, and it gives in detail, you know, about that and lets you know what, what it does. So, you know, you start hearing that and what it does, and like, this is something that's needed into society. So I, I started digging deeper and I started buying them. Then I started realizing like a lot of the coins were under a penny, right? Under a penny. And, you know, Bitcoin was high at the time. So I started buying other coins because what I noticed was as Bitcoin goes up, all the coins follow. And they, it's, it's kind of like the same pattern. They go up as well. So if you bought some under a penny back then, now you got some that are maybe $12, $13, you know? So, I mean, imagine the returns on just that investment, you know, just putting a little bit, a little bit in crypto. I'm not saying go out and spend a bag on crypto. But, you know, a little at a time, a little at a time to, to invest in crypto. So that's how I basically got into it. And 
and from there, you know, I kind of died off because Bitcoin went down. I was like, well, um, let's I'll just keep my crypto coins. So I, I kept my crypto coins, um, left them in the wallet, didn't really bother because I believed in the technology, though. I believe in the technology and I believe the technology could actually um, be great one day, you know, and, and, and return. So now we're back at 20,000. So of all the coins are following. So now, you know, I'm looking at my account. I'm like, I did a trip. I'm like, man, like, okay. I like that. So I started buying more. You know, I'm bullish right now on crypto. So I don't know anybody else, but I'm bullish. But we're going to get into this... Uh, little presentation. So I'm basically going to um, talk about Bitcoin and the future of cryptocurrency. So we're just going to, we're going to come to come from the basics from the beginning. I had to dig a little bit, but we're going to, we're going to go to the beginning and, and we're going to bring it up to how, you know, how you purchase Bitcoin, um, the wallets the, that, that Bitcoin have, um, just, you know, just the future of Bitcoin and where it's going and why, you know, I think you know, people should get into it, to cryptocurrency, if you're not into cryptocurrency, if not, you know, but we'll, let's dig in, let's dig in. What about this here? So, so virtual, you know, virtual currencies are more of a digital alternative to the established fiat system. So like, what is, what is fiat? You know, people ask, what's, what's fiat? So fiat currency is more of like a, uh, it's controlled money. It's, it's, it's money controlled by the government, actually. So that, that is controlled by the government. So that's when you, when you hear in the crypto world, they're talking about fiat. That's what they're talking about. Let me take a sip of water. So like decentralized currency you know, it's been around since till, you know, it's been decentralized since around 18. Um, what's really wonderful about crypto is that it can be purchased with fiat currency, right? You can use US dollar, you can use pound, um, euro. Um, you can use pretty much any worldwide currency to purchase crypto, right? So most of, most of the virtual currencies, they are regulated by the government. Therefore, like they... They exit, be, they 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 exist beyond the traditional monetary policies, right? So, in 2015, CFT CFT uh, classified oh. cryptocurrencies as a commodity, right? As a commodity in 2015. So, you know, they pretty much class it like classified it like gold, right? Silver. So it's regulated as a, as a net source. You know, um, do I see crypto as currency? I really don't. Um, it's like crypto is going up in value. So why would I use it to purchase anything, right? Why would I? I know, I know back in the day, they uh, if someone purchased crypto, crypto with Domino's Pizza, right? And, you know, I mean, I, I don't think you would do that now, you know, because, of course, it's going up in, in value. So... That's something you want to hold, something with like like gold. But I, you know, people say, um, you know, people invest in gold, um, people invest in Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin has more has an underlying technology, it has the blockchain behind it, which makes it more valuable in in my aspect. Um, so I like I love the crypto. So the G20, right, which is a collection of the major nations looking to create a set of standard guidelines by following the roadmap so we can, you know, see a form university of adoption, adoption for the crypto space. So, and it's, you know, it comes in a way we can integrate it into society, making sure we have a set, a set standard of the, of the roles to protect our investors, right? So cryptocurrency is based cryptograph cryptography, right? Um, and the concept, it really emphasizes confidentiality uh, not non-repudiation and authentication. So sincerely, we are, you know, looking to have the level of anonymity. We look to remain transparent and be certain that only the attended parties can read that information, right? So it, it cannot be altered without being detected. And this is why, you know, we have blockchain. The information cannot be denied, right? So the individual who are sending and receiving the digital asset cannot say at a later time that you know they didn't mean to do that transaction, right? Because it's on is on the 
is on the blockchain. Then on the authentication side, um, we have the confirmation of the info that's being transmitted from one party to another, right? Um, so modern cryptographic technology requires mathematical and computer science. Um, it's virtually impossible to break, duplicate, or counterfeit, which you know it fluctuates based on the demand for the cryptocurrency networks. Um, so most currencies are defined by affinity supply. Excuse me. Um, it, it's, it's they, they, that's the, that's defined, they're defined by affinity supply, right? So when we look at the evolution of you know this industry, we have to be um, we have to expect that there is going to be more awareness raised when we look into like the future, right? Um, right here. All right, so let's go more into like the uh, the origin of the cryptocurrency. Um, I don't think it's new. I mean, as I did research, the Egyptians didn't know they practiced crypto. With hieroglyphic, hieroglyphic, um, you know, hieroglyphic. So if you go like to the pyramids and and you go see, go see the pyramids, and the way that they were designed is almost like it was a hidden message with the inter interscription of it, you know. Um, so really, like before we saw the mean strain of adoption of the Bitcoin, there was eCash, there was digital cash, there was Bit Gold. You know, there was, these was trusted third parties systems that they actually failed. You know, it was it was other ones that was also a part of that as well, right? Um, so what's fascinating, you know, what's fascinating about Bitcoin, it was designed to be a currency. It was intended to. It was intended to be decentralized, peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash network and not a currency. So individuals can take control right of their finances and not have that that middleman you know that middleman that agency that's in control of that supply so something like the federal reserve um you know who can print money on demand you don't see that with bitcoin right so now as we progress forward and as the space evolve we pretty much seen many other cryptocurrencies come into existence so you know um litecoin ethereum I know I heard a few people saying that's Ripple, Stellar, XLM is Stellar, Ripple, XRP, that's my boo. <laughs> Try, but you know, um, it's a lot of other, a lot of cryptocurrencies, thousands of cryptocurrencies on the chain, right? And I mean, as we progress, you know, move forward, right? The underlying technology of all of the assets is going to be determined how significant um, they are with society in society. I mean, each one of the technology lists, they are a different, they're a little different, but they serve like a different purpose than Bitcoin, right? They want to accomplish something more, you know? Um, but like I said, we got, it's thousands of them. I mean, I remember um, about 15, 16, uh, I was, when we was purchasing crypto, it wasn't as many cryptocurrencies as it is today. Like it's a, it's, it's a, it's thousands. I guess kind of was hard to keep up. Um, so you know, this leads up to leads us into the future. So we see a lot of all the altcoins. We call them altcoins, alternative coins that are you know trying to offer greater speed um, or some other type of advantages, right? So let's get into it. We want to get into the juicy. We're going to talk about Bitcoin. Any questions so far? We good? I guess we good with that. Say that again, bro. You said any questions? We good? Uh, you said you big on um, Ripple? Yeah. Yeah, I got I got a shitload of Ripple. I'm just waiting on it to bounce back. Man, yeah, it's it's coming though. I'm I'm actually trading it as well. So I, I hold Ripple as well, and I also trade it. So and also Bitcoin. So it's definitely um. It took a dive, but you know, crypto is vol it's very volatile, man. It's very, you know, it's very, very volatile. So you can, it can be up and then just shoot down. It's just, <laughs> that's Bitcoin. But we know that we see the trend and we see where it's going and we see where it's headed. And, um, you know, it's nothing like it, bro. So let's talk about who created, you know, Bitcoin. Um, so it said the first 
Bitcoin specification and proof of concept was published in 09, right? Crypto graphic mailing list. Satoshi Nokomoto. You know what I'm saying? I kind of mess his name up sometimes, but it's cool. Satoshi Nokomoto. So what he did, the genius he is, um, he created Bitcoin. So he, when he created it though, he vanished. He like disappeared. Like Satoshi was out of here. So he created it. Um, he created. He had a purpose when he created it, though, right? Um, so he created this Bitcoin using blockchain technology. So blockchain technology was actually around before Bitcoin. So he was the first to actually use it to use blockchain in Bitcoin. Right. So, you know, um, and I, I think about it, I was like, why did he just vanish like that? And I, you know, I kind of think about it and I mean, it was decentralized. So maybe he didn't want to be attached to it. I'm not sure. Um, but he gone. He, he around. I think he, they, they tried to, they got a lot of pictures online, right? And we don't know who, who that is really. So, so we're going to talk about how Bitcoin was, is created, right? Sip of water. I Bitcoin created. So new Bitcoins are generated by a competitive decentralized processing called mining. This process involves the individuals who are rewarded by the network of the services. Um, the Bitcoin miners are process transaction and secure network which Usually specialized hard specialized hardware and are collecting new bitcoins in exchange. So when I look at like Bitcoin mining, right? I, I kind of look at like when you're mining for, for for diamonds. So you're mining for diamonds. It's a process. So you got these chisels and you out here mining, you're trying to find these diamonds in Africa somewhere. You you mine like you chiseling. So when you find you're trying to find these these diamonds, it's a puzzle. It's a process. It's a certain situation. It's a certain way you have to go about to get these diamonds. If you're an expert in that field, then you have a better way of getting to the diamonds. So, like Bitcoin, instead of mining, going out there with the shovel in your hand, you pick. It's all digital. So we have digital digital mining. Um, what they call like in digital mining, they call them rigs, right? So you have these rigs that people create. You can go on YouTube, anywhere you, that people create. It's a bunch of like computer chips or, you know, processors that's actually creating and trying to mine a Bitcoin. So it's like a puzzle they're trying to figure out. So they're trying to go through and figure out this puzzle to get this reward, right? They're trying to get the, the Bitcoin. They're trying to get this bread, you know, and you have you have rigs with uh, like Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin is certain ones. So I, I actually ran into a guy um, and he creates the rigs. I mean, and he probably spent probably, I don't know, 2000 to 3000 to create a rig. Um, but he said he's he's spitting out coins. I mean, weekly. So Litecoin, even if you spit out a Litecoin, digitally you you can actually convert it into bitcoin you know so they're getting rewarded as they're they're figuring out this this mining so you got big big corporations that's doing it you got small people that's also doing it too everybody have a network somewhere right everybody rewarding with their networks right so let's break into this so um check this out so let's talk about the cycles The parabolic cycles of Bitcoin. I mean, it may it may be a theory, but I don't know. Um, who knows with Bitcoin? It's an emerging technology. It's really still is in it's in its emphasis phase. So, who knows? Um, but I know it runs off of cycles, right? So if you look at the graph, you can see the first cycle when it went from zero to twenty to, to what's that? Twenty dollars. Imagine if you bought something, if you bought something at two cents, right? I mean, 5,000 coins. I mean, $100, spend $1,000 in, in, in the coins. I don't know, just random. And it's worth $20, $1,000 maybe. I mean, we can bring out the calculator, but you know, 
Um, just, just, just think, I mean, the return on that, the ROI, you're talking about thousands of percents. <laughs> so what happens is the first cycle, we've seen it um, around 2011, 2012, it kind of dipped, dipped down and the first mining reward having happened, right? So the reward, the minings have something to do with the cycles. So basically when you're talking like Bitcoin halving, um, we're talking about halving refers to the number of the coins, right? That miners receive for adding new transactions um, to the blockchain, then, you know, cut in half actually. So this will diminish, you know, about 12 and a half Bitcoin to like six and a quarter. And we'll have half again, every 210,000 blocks. So every 210,000 blocks of the blockchain, we have rewards, right? Until the last Bitcoin is actually mine. And when the last Bitcoin is mine, that's it. There's no more Bitcoin. And they say that year is 2140. I mean, it's about hundred years, but like, so that's why I say Bitcoin is still in its emphasis phases, emphasis phases, right? We still have a lot to grow. We're still just at 20,000. This thing is going, it's going to go. Um, it's been tested, right? I mean, we've seen it. They talk about it now. They're talking about it now, right? You turn on CNBC. You know, they used to have the NASDAQ. They have the S&P up there. You know, now you see Bitcoin flashing every, every now and then. I, I started to notice that. I said, oh, it's got everybody eyes open. You know, the economy doing bad. Why well, put it in gold when I can put it in Bitcoin and get some money? I mean, you can literally sit. You don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. You can literally, literally sit, I don't know, a thousand dollars in Bitcoin and watch it grow. Of course, you're going to take some dips. It's very volatile now. <laughs> very volatile. You just see some dips, but I mean, if you read charts, then you, you can understand and you can catch it at the right entry and ride it up, right? So, you know. So that's basically the, 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 the cycling is, like I said, it's four cycles. So um, the third cycle, we actually went to $20,000. $20, um, so we're in another cycle right now. Well, we're in the third minor reward half. So we're still in, yeah, in this cycle. So I don't know, right? I don't know how far Bitcoin will go. People say, you know, I mean, if you look at, look at the chart, it, it don't lie. It's, it's telling you that it's going up. So 100,000 next year, maybe. That'll be good. You know, um, definitely be good for the altcoins because that's what people are really banking on, the altcoins. So as the Bitcoin goes up, them little under one cent, 0 0.0033, uh, one cent penny stocks, they got a chance to quadruple, quadru I don't know, I can't even pronounce it. They flipped that hey, money. Martez, yes. I don't mean to interrupt you, but are you going to show us um, how to find some pennies, penny Bitcoins, or not Bitcoins, penny, you know, cryptocurrencies, how we can find them? Yeah, we're going to get into that. Okay. We're going to get into the good stuff. I, mean, I know y'all want to know how to buy them, where to find them. I know that. We're going we're gonna to get into that, Miss uh, Sheree. Sheree, I said that right. Mashara. Mashara. I just screwed your name. Oh, look. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. Um, that leaves us here. Let's go. So why was Bitcoin created, right? Um, obviously, to decentralize a digital currency and you know, solve the double spending problem, creating a new asset. Um, he, he wanted to create a trustless cash system you know, covering all the expenses that they deal with, all the, you know, the security measures, um, just the, the accounting, the fraudulent activities, just to cut all that out. So, you know, in short, like, cars like Visa, you know, um, they impose a lot of fees generated. You know, I think like in 2013, they had about 13 billion in just fees, you know, just fees, bank fees, revenue. That's a whole nother revenue stream for them. 
Um, so trust and banks, you know, like why we leaving our money in, in the bank accounts? Um, stocks, they put them in stocks of crypto. Banks, you know, banks use our money every day, you know, um, different assets to put, they put in the different assets. Uh, they put it in Forex, they put it in uh, properties. So it's different assets that they put out, put out, put out money. I don't know if you ever noticed, right? If you, if you, uh, the bank account ever was, you ever looked at your bank account and it was like un maintenance down, unscheduled maintenance. They probably using your money and, and making money and, and, and returning you 0.2 cent you know, every every year or whatnot. So yeah, just something to think about. So in February, right, Satoshi, this, this was on the blog. He said the root problem with the conventional currency is all the trust that's required to make it work. The central banks must not be trusted to buy the currency, but the history of fiat currency is full of breaches of that trust. Banks will be trusted to hold our money and transfer electronically but they lend it out in waves of credit bubbles, a burly fraction in reserves, right? So that was found on a, um, a blog somewhere when he was, he was actually talking about that. Um, let's talk about this blockchain. Now, I know a lot of people want to talk about the blockchain. So the blockchain, it's simplest terms, right? A timestamp series with a bunch of transactions, records, data, they cluster in computers, right? So they in a bunch of a bunch of computers. It's it's not it's not it's managed by you know it's not not allowed by any single single entity, right? So each of these blocks of data they secure cryptographic principles. So it, it's, it's rules to it, right? To get in the blockchain. So it's it's basically that's you have a bunch of blockchains, right? and you passing down data and information in these blockchains. You know, everything is open. It can be seen, it's trusted. You can't remove it. You can't, you can't break that, that love. They got that love. And that's, 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 give me an example. So say of all of us, right? We are, we say we are nodes. Nodes meaning like computer networks. Um, so we all computer networks, right? We all work together. We are we are our block we are our own blockchain. Um, I can remove some of y'all out, or y'all can drop off. We'll still continue on going because we still have that information, right? So let's say we um, let's say like I want to go to one of my colleagues, and I wrote a book, and I get to my colleagues and say, you know, check this out. You know, how, how, what you think about it? Before I gave it to them, though, I stored it in blockchain number two. I put it there. Gave him the book, right? He gets the book. He looks at it. He's like, this is pretty good. I mean, in his mind, he in his mind. I think I'm just going to take his name off and put my name on it and just give it to the publisher. Come on. So he goes over to blockchain two and try to remove it, right? When he remove it, two, three came together. They said, oh, no, it's corrupted. It, it ain't right. Something ain't right. Something ain't right. So it's not going to work, right? It's not going to work. You can't remove things from the blockchain. It's, it's not going to work. They all work together. So once it goes in, that's it. You can't put, you can't take anything out, right? So breaking down the blockchain, right? Bitcoin. Bitcoin goes to the blockchain. Roughly takes, if you send the money, it could probably take about 10 minutes or so to go through the blockchain. Um, have you ever, what's the fastest way you think you could send a million dollars to somebody? I mean, what's the 100,000? I mean, in 10 minutes. There's no, there's no, no chain like it, right? But the thing I like about it, the chain is open. It's open for the public to see, right? We can see how much money is flowing through the blockchain with Bitcoin. You can't see like what's their name because they have a long, a long address, like numbers, letters, bunch of addresses that identifies that transaction. 
So we can't actually see that. We can't see who name on it. We can't see what, you know, where they from or where they sent it from. We can't see none of that through the, through the blockchain technology. So um, we, you know, Let's say, right, you know what? I'm gonna take it to the, I'm gonna take it to the chain. I'm gonna go to the blockchain. Let's take it to the chain. Let me get it for y'all. Um, right All right, so what this is, right? Everybody see my screen? We good? Yep. Okay. What this is, right, you go to blockchain.com. Blockchain.com. Real live time, you see Bitcoin transactions, right? Somebody sent 13, 5, 10. Um, a lot of times you see some big ones around here. Um, 16. But... You can send any amount of money through this blockchain, 122,000. You can actually see, see the, and you can see the times and the amounts. This is a Bitcoin address. Instead of like one Bitcoin, you don't have to purchase one Bitcoin, but say like, they, they have like a, a numeric number, you know, according to how many Bitcoins you have. So it comes out with this right here. Um, so it's a thousand dollars right here in Bitcoin, right? So you can actually see the tr the chain of, of the transactions. Um, not only, I mean, if, even if you're sending like, not only money, but contracts, right? You could send contracts. Just imagine what blockchain can really do in our society. I mean, with medical records, right? You have, you know, medical records or anything. I don't know what you do, but um, just putting it on a blockchain, it can't be removed. Like you can, I could put it, put it in the, in the, in the wall or go to Walmart and put it on a, you know, have like um, everything, the, the merchandise in the blockchain. And, you know, you can't remove that. Nobody, no employee can go and remove that. Now, the way they have it now, I can, somebody can just go and delete it. So that's just an idea of what, how the black, the blockchain correct is, 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 does works. So just, I hope everybody understand that you know everybody getting the blockchain thing we good with that any questions yeah i got it the hash is basically the address the time is you know of course when it was sent the amount is either the equivalent to one bitcoin or a satoshi and then the amount converts to the u.s dollar right on that's basically what it is and we'll look at the hair but i can't I can't show my ass, but you know, we can, that, that's basically the ass. So you can either send it using like, um, you know, you have your QR codes. So you can, you can send it that way as well. <clears throat> What's the benefit of buying the um, Bitcoin on blockchain versus cash app? Um, with cash app, I wouldn't store that. Um, you can buy it with cash app, but I, I can, you can also send with cash app. Like I, I buy Bitcoin with Cash App when I'm sending it to my trading application, my MT4, my, my broker, and I'm trading Bitcoin and on um, Ripple. I send it there because it's faster than going through Coinbase. Coinbase actually takes, man, they, they'll send half of it and then send the other half seven days later. You know, they just, it's slow. But as far as storing Bitcoin on, on there, I, I don't trust it. I don't trust storing my coins on none of the exchanges, but we'll get into that. And I show you. Go ahead. I got a quick follow up. <clears throat> like PayPal and Cash App, do they allow you? I know they allow you to buy it, but do they allow you to remove it and put it on cold storage or like your own um, your own Bitcoin wallet? Do they I allow? It? Or can you? Are, are you able to just communicate to another um, quote unquote brokerage like um, Coinbase? Mm, I, I haven't actually bought anything through PayPal. You know, I haven't really, I know it's new, but I haven't really inspected it and bought anything to see if you can send it. You know, um, they probably see it trying to get that take payments, right? But I know you can buy big, buy, buy cripple, not cripple, but crypto um, on PayPal. I just don't know if you can send it, send it. Or you, you should be able to send it. You should be able to send all crypto, but I know for a while, Cash App 
you I couldn't send it when I first started, but at least for me. Did that answer your question? Yep. Okay. Anybody else? If not, we'll move forward. To um add to coaches thing, I was using Cash App to just send and receive because I was using MT4. But as far as like the whole storage thing, coach, I would just uh, do something like um, not even really Coinbase. I use Crypto.com as an app. Um, you can also um, get into staking. That's a whole nother subject. But uh, Coinbase, to what you said, Matrez, it does have a high uh, rate and stuff. So Crypto.com is my favorite. Um, the rates are not that expensive and you have more coins available on the crypto.com as well. So that was just, you know, my FYI. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I have all my stuff on the Ledger X that he's about to talk about right now. Yeah. Uh, since, you know, Cash App, that's, that's pretty, um fairly new to the market and it, and it came mm -hmm. after that 2017 wave. Yeah, I wouldn't keep it on cash. I mean, if you're going to um, send and receive, yes, but just keep it on your ledger like you do. And I think that will be just fine just because, you know, Cash App has its, own nuances mm -hmm. so the ledger is supposed to be if it you know any of these sites do go down you're able to visibly see it on the ledger so okay. i would um you're going the right way with the ledger cool all right we, we, we got the expert they kind of explain it but you know um coinbase right we'll talk about you know coinbase the different sites um we can go to coinbase let's go to coinbase i think i got it up i don't have much in there because i don't create i don't keep I don't keep my crypto on the exchange. I think I've, I've, I've actually, you know, I'll tell you why, but I've actually, um, like I probably got, I bought some Ripple the other day. I just put a few dollars in there. So I have it like automatically, you know, taken out of my account and just, you know, for whatever coins I want to buy. Um, I know somebody asked about a lot of the coins you can buy. Um, you got it's certain coins on Coinbase. All coins are not on Coinbase. It's just it's so many. It's other um, exchanges they are on. So we can go down and see some of them. Hold on. Let's go into anything. Let's go into trying to get into the trade. No. Like here's a lot of coins on here. Um, USD coin, Ripple, um, Balancer. I mean, we go and look, right? Just imagine. Okay, we'll pick. We pick Chainlink. Let's look with chain link the price. So the price is at thirteen dollars, right? What pumps me up about crypto. Like, you look at the whole chart. Like, you know, look out. Let's look out. <laughs> Let's look at this, right? Let's talk numbers. So, two thousand eighteen, around that time, you're talking about two cents. Right, say about a boat. I don't know, put a thousand dollars in it and just bought it then. I mean, what's this two years down the line? Now you see rip uh, Bitcoin is moving, so all the other coins are moving with it. We had 13. dollars I mean, just think of the return on that for how much you would have. I mean, depending on if you'd have bought a thousand coins, I think I calculated. I don't know if you calculated now, but hey, but. 600,000 or something like that. I mean, my point is, right, we don't know where, we don't know where Bitcoin going. We don't know. Um, I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna move. You know, um, it's gonna be here for a while. It's a new emerging technology. So why not get them cheap, right? Now, why not buy them? There's still coins out there that are actually cheap, cheaper than this right now, you know? Um, so why not go out and purchase? Even, even if you're not doing it for yourself, I mean, for your kids, kids, kids. 
Does Dogecoin um uh, come up under this? Dogecoin, um I think so. Let's search it. And I just asked because I seen all over the um gram about past two weeks and that's like buy Dodge coin up. Is this like a nickel or something? Let's see. Um Dodge coin been around a while. I'm not sure the um actual the technology, but the, the what what it does. But I've I've heard about. I've seen it on I've seen it on Robinhood before, but I haven't seen it seen it on the uh, the Coinbase. Um, but you know you have Stellar, one of my favorites too. Um, some other coins on here, but. You can also search for coins on, let's see. Yeah, all of these move based off Bitcoin? A lot of them do. Um, a lot of them do follow, follow that trend and move with it. I mean, if you look at like Ripple, let's take it to the chart. Right, this Bitcoin right here, right? So um, they, they kind of move similar. Like if I pull up, because when you see it, you know, go out and buy it, buy it low, and what if it doesn't move? Like, how do we determine which ones actually move? Yeah, I have the same question because I'm thinking like if you're saying there's thousands of cryptos out there and they all kind of move with the Bitcoin, does it matter which one we pick or should we be I mean, looking I think, more at like Ethereum or Ripple? I think, go ahead. I was uh, just to um, kind of uh, help along the way. My reason was the things that help solve a problem. It's right. a million and one coins. I think Mark Trez likes the ripple because it's tied to the Federal Reserve. So right. when he was talking about the money, if you're trying to transfer a million dollars, that's going to take about up to five days, as opposed to if you use this blockchain um, technology with ripple, mm -hmm. yeah. it can actually take a matter of moments. Just like that. And I got a video to show you guys about ripple too. Right. So I know a lot of my other friends, they like Ripple because of that. And you also have behind the scenes, the bank or banks are, are actually buying into the Ripple as well. So they see the vision is just that the big investors see the vision before the retail investors does. That makes sense. Makes sense. Before we move on, um, Ethereum is another really popular one, and you said each coin has its own um, its own purpose. What is the purpose of the Ethereum coin? I think that Ethereum is more of storing contracts, right? So, storing putting contracts through the blockchain. You know, that's why Ethereum is is kind of I can't. I guess you can you can kind of based off kind of like a DocuSign maybe, but it's actually, it's, it's it, when well, you actually sending it through the trans, through the, through the blockchain, does that answer your question? And also Mashara, the dominance right now, every, the Bitcoin wave, and I think with Kathy Woods per seeing that it can go 200,000, because if you look at it, Bitcoin is about almost two thirds of the whole blockchain technology. Then secondly is Ethereum and then all the other minor coins. So that's why the popularity of Bitcoin because it's really like the whole Dow Jones, like it is like the stock exchange and all, all the other coins are like secondary to it. Exactly, so you kind of look at it, you kind of look at it as a Dow and you look at the other coins like other, other technologies or you know, um, based off of you know, like fundamentals too. Um, and then, you know, to add to that, I mean, you can actually research a lot of the, a lot of the coins. So what we, what we use is kind of like white paper, or you can go to their websites, um, yeah, ripple up, yeah, you can go to the websites and it basically tells you, you know, um, about ripple and, you know, uh, 
Let's see. It tells you about, here's the ledger too, but we'll get over that. But it tells you about, you know, Ripple and the technology, but I like the, I'm trying to pull up the white papers. So I pulled it up. Hold on. It's not working good. Uh, all right, so you, I just kind of Googled this um, and it brought up the, you know, the, the white paper of Ripple and all of them have this and it basically just lets you know, you can dig and, and, and dig deep into it and give you an introduction and just let you know what that technology does. And if you think that that technology is needed in society, you know what I mean, you can do what you do. You know, if you think it'll make a difference, what you do that's why it's thousands but you know you'll hear people talking about them kind of and you know a lot of them will pop up you know or you can do your research and kind of dig into them too um another site i like is binance binance you know when i first got started using crypto we just had binance we had we had binance and you had actually coinbase but coinbase only had like ethereum ripple bitcoin on it Binance had like all the coins, they had a lot of coins on there. So you would actually buy Bitcoin through Coinbase, send it through Binance, and then buy the coins using Bitcoin, you know, um, through Binance, but you using Bitcoin to purchase the other coins. And you can um actually bring them back. You can I wouldn't leave them on that exchange, but you can. I actually um I left some Bitcoin, not Bitcoin, but other coins on my streams. When I went back and looked, I was like, wow, you know, it kind of, it's kind of crazy how it, how it grows, but I, I, um, I took them off. So I don't like my coins on the exchange. Um, but what I think we talked about, I don't like my coins on exchange. What I like to use is uh, ledgers. So you can go to like ledger.com and ledgers is where you can actually store have mine here. You can actually store your um your crypto here. So you store it with your key. You just you know put put all your you can transfer it off the blockchain here. So it's gonna be digital. You know, so it's not like stocks is totally different. So this is my Bitcoin wallet. You know, some people like their wallets. I think we was explaining it earlier. Some people like their wallets on the exchange. Um, I just heard this guy, he had his crypto on Coinbase. He had $26,000. They hacked it. So just imagine, you know, they, they really, out, there's some hackers out there who are hacking. Now, if you go to some of the sites, you got to go through author, authorization, Google authorization. Some of them got Binance and you know, look at your face and you got to, it, it's, it's a lot to it because people can get in and hack them. So you want to make sure your crypto is safe and secure and you can't nobody can get in this like i have literally 24 keywords and i when i went to add when i went to add some ripple the other day i had to literally punch in the 24 keywords that are attached to this i mean the words like kind of punching it in you attach it to your computer as well but you have to punch it in here and i have to go through all of them all of them have to be correct for me to access this. Is so, there a monthly fee to use this website? No, once you buy this, it's like 119 bucks. So once you buy this, um, it's good, it's yours. I think some of them do have storage. Um, we got the Nano X and the Nano S. I think the difference, the difference between them is the, uh, the storage on them. And um, I think I ran out of one and I, I start working on another one to fill it up, but you can go through this ledger here and it basically, you know, tells you about our water. It tells you about, you know, you know your ledger. So, um, but I love it. I like it. I like it a lot, you know, so you just kind of, you just got to have those keys though. You got to, I mean, you can't, I wouldn't put them nowhere digitally. I wouldn't put them, I write them down and I secure them in a safe spot, right? Because, you know, you never know. So you know you got people walking around with million dollars with this, you know, on these these uh, ledgers exchanges. So you know, um, it's definitely safekeeping. Um, like I wouldn't trust my 
I don't trust my, my crypto on those things. I mean, crypto.com, they, they're as good too. But they was talking about those earlier. Um, and I, I heard about crypto.com where you can actually, it's an app, but you can actually, they actually give you extra coins or some type of rewards or something. I don't know if somebody, anybody know about that, but they reward you for putting so many coins on there or something. I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, Let's go. So we know PayPal. We talked about PayPal. And let's talk about the ATM, though. I don't know if you guys have a Bitcoin ATM in your city, but in Atlanta, you know, I I probably pull, I probably seen, I don't know, a few of them. So I've seen them in gas stations. I've seen them in, you know, other other areas. I don't know if you guys see any, um, see any ATMs in your city. Yeah, I saw one. Um, I was searching for um, something one night and on Google Maps um, here in Philly, I saw a Bitcoin ATM and I was really shocked when I saw that. Um, I wasn't even searching for it. It just said Bitcoin ATM when I was looking for something else. Yeah, that thing they have an app too, or some type of an app and you can actually find it and where is that. So with the Bitcoin ATM, you can actually deposit and withdraw Bitcoin. So, you know, if you got some Bitcoin, you don't want to deposit, get some fiat, you know, you take it, take it to the, to the, to the, the ATM and you get to some cash out, you know, so it, it's that simple. You can also send it. So, no, I think it's a deposit and withdraw. That's what I think. Only thing you can do on it is deposit and withdraw. But, you know, you can always send with your, with your, with your, your Apple, your, I mean, it's your Apple, it's your cash app. Um, but cash app, we, yeah, we talked about that. You know, the thing about cash app, I like, I like what they did. I mean, it, it, it allows though, because everybody got a cash app and sending money, but it allows, um, it allows you to have a Bitcoin wallet address. So everybody walking around now have a Bitcoin wallet address. Believe it or not, you, you have one that you can pull it up. So it's all, it's on cash app. So um, I can send you any, I can send you money right now with Bitcoin. But you know, what I'm saying, and you can you can send money. So you have that that account. But I don't don't always share that, you know, because it can be hacked. So you got some money on it. It's, that's kind of your address. That's that's your home. That's kind of like your where you at, where you stay. So you don't want nobody kicking down your door and taking your bread. So. <laughs> Mark Charles, I got a question. Yeah. Oh, uh, what? And you may have already covered. I had to log off for a second and log back on. You talk about DeFi and yield farming. What is that? I'm talking about what now? DeFi and yield farm. So one of my friends, he's he's big into crypto. He does not hold. And when I asked him what is he doing to make money, he said YouTube, DeFi, and yield farm. I have no clue what it is. So I'll see if you knew what it was. I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. Give me something new. <laughs> around i mean i don't know everything about it but you know i, that, I don't know I, yeah I'm, i i have uh, like i said i i i don't know anything past buying coins and holding them i'm not right? exactly sure what he's doing but i mean i've seen <clears throat> i don't know what the process is how he's even making the money but he is <clears throat> making money and i know it's from crypto but i don't i'm not sure so i was trying to see no is worries. It, is it like a coin or a cryptocurrency? No, it's 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 some type of process that you do with coins because he does it with Ethereum, Ethereum, I'm sorry, he, he, and something he, else. He have a rig and he creates them or something like that. He mine them. He's a miner. Way no. way above my head. I can ask him. No, no but actually, I'm not. I'm not 100 sure. So I didn't know if you knew what it was or not. Yeah, I don't know. Let me know. Let me find out. You know. Okay. Yeah, I invite <laughs> you what it's called. And hey, I guess we all can YouTube it. <laughs> yeah. I know, you know, I know. You know, I've been around crypto a little bit, but I know I don't know everything. Um, I recently like I I recently started digging hard back into it. When I was like, oh man, Bitcoin on the rise, and I looked at my account. So it just got me motivated, right? So <laughs> just started buying. <laughs> so. Yeah, um, let me see. We're here. Let's take it. Uh, I think a lot of these altcoins we already talked about, right? Um, it's Ripple. I want to show you. Let me show you a quick video of Ripple. Uh, 
Yeah, I got that. Um, I got a lot of Stellar too. Yeah, Stellar, Stellar is the same, it's similar to Ripple, right? Yep. Yeah, Stellar, Stellar is fast transaction time, very fast, faster than Bitcoin, faster than Litecoin, I think too. Yeah, yeah it's 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 actually is used for the unbanked people. So people that's individuals that have, don't have a bank, you know, you can use Stellar. Um, and you will be allowed to use Stellar and, and have your finances there. Cause it's, you know, it's probably like 2 million people, man, actual adults. I was researching, I think 1.7 exactly. that actually don't have bank accounts. So, and I, I don't blame them, but you know, unless they got their money working somewhere else, but you know, you still gonna keep a bank account. Um, let me show you this here video. I thought this was pretty dope. Real quick. Chowdala! That's the sums up with Ripple. So Ripple's sort of like Cash App in a sense, but you don't have a middleman, right? You're sending it, but you don't have a middleman. I can send you a million dollars, nobody knowing, and it's just going through the blockchain. And you don't you don't have that that you know that one like a like Cash App have you once you send Cash App a person send Cash App it goes through the middleman and the middleman to send the money, you know, and there's fees involved. So that's what decentralizing that's where crypto take take out them fees you know we work through the blockchain you know so um stellar i like stellar too um stellar kind of follows ripple i mean if you're going to get ripple you might as well get stellar you know ripple with stellar is kind of i like stellar like i said it's for the for the overseas and you know bridge the currency between the tokens and the thing i like about stellar right your man akon you know he he built his coin Acon off of off of XLM stuff. So he built his cryptocurrency off of that in Africa. So what he's doing, right? He's building a six billion dollar futuristic Acon city. He already started. He already started building it. I mean, they're gonna be using to get paid for transactions, healthcare, everything. It, we're using they're using the Acon coin. Um, it's kind of hard to get that coin. Um, I don't, they don't have none of the blockchains, but um, I, I've heard some people that know somebody that know somebody, but I, I don't get it. But yeah, but that, you know, he's, that's, I think it's pretty dope. Yeah, he's doing that, you know what I'm saying? So he kind of got that bread, but he's using the XLM, using, he putting it on top of XLM, basically using their network, I'm calling it. Questions and answers. I'm gonna take you to some of the uh, coins, right? We'll get into, I mean, not the coins, but some of the uh, the sites you can kind of dig into, like Coinbase. I like Coinbase. It's kind of like your blooming bird, so you can kind of, you know, look at certain coins um, and learn about them, and you can just learn what's going on in the crypto world. You know, just the news here. Um, let me go check. I don't know. Um, just kind of play around in here. Um, Cardano. Cardano is a good one too. That's used in the healthcare um, aspects of the blockchain. So that that's going to, I think that's going to be used in the, in the healthcare market. So Cardano is real cheap too. I think Cardano may be, I haven't checked, but uh, what is it? AD, ADA? Something like that. Let me see. Cardano here. Yeah. 30 cent, 34 cents right now. Um, you know, it was low 25 cent, but I mean, it's kind of moving. You know, I think 
Bitcoin, it has a, it, it gives them the momentum. That's what I, I was trying to find. It gives them the momentum for those, those other coins to actually move. Then you have sites like um, Coin Telegraph, same thing. Um, you see a lot of news here um, about cryptocurrency and coins. So you can kind of go through through here um, and free. And um, let's see, any questions? Sorry. Is it like um, stocks where you buy low? But that was my question. <laughs> but Bitcoin is like at a high now. So people like don't be afraid of Bitcoin. So big Bitcoin, you can buy pieces of Bitcoin. You can put in ten bucks. I put in. I, I put in like. I did that. I, yeah, I, did cash. that. I was playing with cash out when it first came out, and I kind of put like. I don't know, I think it was 15 bucks. I think it ran up to like 30, 40 bucks. I was like, oh. <laughs> well, you bought it at the low low because I bought it and I bought 10 bucks at like 15 and now it's at 19 and my 10 is worth $11 and 67 cents. Yeah, it, it'll, it'll go back up. Like I said, Bitcoin is very volatile. It moves, it can come up. It, I think it went up to eight, 19, dropped down to almost close to 17 or something like that. So it, it It'll drop on you. <laughs> it's very volatile. A uh, quick question, uh, good brother. This is a uh, Hassan. Just wanted to know how, how long have you been um doing like the Bitcoin or the blockchain? How long have you been doing this for? Um, I've been doing it probably since 2017. Or like a couple. Are uh, you seeing like is, is it like like a, a good return on investment or like what's your thoughts? I mean, what coin can we look at? No, we can. Let's go to Coinbase. It sounds interesting, but it's like it's so many coins. It seems like <laughs> you can you can you can go off. Like I said, you can kind of. I can't get this off the screen. Hold on. You can kind of go to uh, Coinbase, and you can kind of a lot of the a lot of the co the coins that usually make it to Coinbase are more of the ones that's actually doing a little something you know kind of so you could kind of scroll through them but you can get them cheap like you can get them um like I, i'm i'm a fan of i like XLL. let's look at uh let me see so if you could only invest in like five cryptos for 30 years which ones would you choose to be honest crypto is kind of like it's almost kind of like playing russian roulette it can be but that's why I say do your research and look into each coin and you look into the white papers and see, you know, what is it that you like about that. So you can actually buy a few coins here, a few coins here, because the thing about it, we don't know if it's going to be another Bitcoin that shoots up like that. It, it may be very well. I've seen a coin, I forgot the name of the coin. But it was 20,000, 30,000. It was higher than Bitcoin. I forgot the crypto. I wish I could not have to put it in the root, but um, it was kind of higher than Bitcoin. So, me personally, I mean, being in it when I was in so long, I, I've heard about like a lot of the coins, like the basic coins that was actually moving. Um, and just, I just like the technology behind them. Um, like, we can let's take this one. I don't know what USD coin is. That kind of answer your question. I'm trying to find a coin that we can kind of uh, look at. Look at some numbers. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of hard to key in on five of them just for the simple fact that it's still in its infancy stage. Like, yeah, the ground, the infrastructure is still being built for you know the blockchain and cryptocurrency as a whole, um, and as a matter of fact institutional money hasn't even started to pour into this yet so right. i think once you start to see that once you start to see you know the infrastructure being set up for institutional money to come in then that's when you'll definitely see a run up and you know the value of these coins um so i know I, well for me i would say bitcoin is is, is the granddaddy uh, right. i like eth i like ripple um i like zero x and i like stellar too but then again, to Marquez, Martez's point, 
but then 10, 10 years, you, those some of those names might, might not even be here. So it just all kind of all depends. Kind of like, yes. there's so many, you know, like Khan just came out with a coin. Like he didn't have nothing to have a coin. He, built, he got that coin just for his to build his, his country. You say the words, it won't be here, but you have money invested in it. How does that work? Means it money. won't. I mean, you you still have the coin, but it'll be worthless, right? Like an option. <laughs> I mean, not, I mean, no, <laughs> not even like an option. But the option, the option will cease to exist at the end of the expiration date, right? But with cryptocurrency, you can still have the coin on your ledger or in your cold storage or wherever you have it stored, but the value of it will be worthless. So you can have a thousand, you know, ripples, but right, value, that's your point. Yeah. So without the big money moving into it, we're kind of just investing in the hype and the promise of it yeah you got to be a, it's kind of like you got to be a firm believer in where you think whatever you think that white paper is, is telling you uh concerning that cryptocurrency you got to go through that and if you you know if that aligns with your values and you know you, you may want to look to invest in it other than that it's very it's very it's tricky because i'm right now I'm, I'm still holding a bag from a lot of stuff back in um, 2017 <laughs> and yeah. that's why I would just um MK just get a couple of coins that you like and then you can just keep dollar cost average and that's the beauty of it because it's not as high as like us getting one contract that may be like two three four hundred dollars you're getting a lot of these coins penny on a dollar so by the time you even you know maybe 15 20 dollars each pay period or something it's kind of like you said it and you forget it but a, a, yeah, that's a, a good point. Mm -hmm, but a couple of these coins, even though right now it's kind of like visionary, it's a lot of behind the scenes that is going on that one day it will just pop and everybody will be like, wait a minute, this was the coin I heard about in 2020. And then all of a sudden it's making noise. So like the XRP, XLM and the Bitcoin, they've been making noises for a while and they're still relatively cheap. Well, xrp and ethereum but you can buy fractions of bitcoin and then you can just those can be your three go-to coins right there and then you know keep it moving so if it pops it pops i don't think they'll be worthless i just think that there's a lot of coins that are worthless and there's a lot of coins that are about to be they're in their prime like mark always says and they're about to do major things yeah she's on that up very perfectly all right, so you don't want to, you don't want to split out. Like I said in the beginning, you don't want to spend your whole bag because you, you don't know what's going to happen. Like the coins are, are way below pennies. Some of them are, you know, and like twenty cents. I mean, twenty cents, you know, they up to. But so you can, you know, you can just buy here and there. I wouldn't go hard in them like you're going to buy some options. You know, you you know, you know, what options going to do. Crypto is kind of like a, you have to be a believer in it, believe into that in that coin and think it's going to take off. We already know what blockchain can do. Is that's a simple fact. What it's going to bet to be the best technology, a coin that's going to take us, you know, drive us home. I mean, and I like Ripple because they partner with a lot of the, the banks, P Bank of America, PNC, if you see money, like MoneyGram and stuff like that. So they, they to me, they got a little, they got they ahead of the game. So it's just all a matter of, like you said, the uh, the big institutes, the big whales come in. Once the big whales come in, you liable to see ripple. My personal opinion, I think ripple is gonna go. But you liable to see ripple. You wake up in the morning, it might be a thousand dollars. I don't know. We don't know. It's all speculation. If you send me, if we're doing a transaction in Cash App and you have Bitcoin, do I have to accept that? As payment, and if you do send it as payment, how do I get it back to dollars? Well, if you're buying, say, if you're buying from a, a vendor like an Amazon, right? That's what you're saying? No, like you, you and I do a cash app transaction. You owe me $50 and right. you decide to send it to me in Bitcoin. Okay. Do I have to accept that? Yeah, you can accept. You can accept it, and you can you can actually initially take it. You can send it to, I think, uh, Cash App or convert it over. You can cash. You can cash, oh. or you can send it to any other exchange. You can send. You can send it's digital, so you can send it anywhere. So you can send it to Coinbase. 
And if you got your car linked, you can withdraw, withdraw it. Or if you go into a Bitcoin ATM, the same thing, same way. So you can use any of your wallets. I, I, I think you, I know Coinbase, you can use the, the cash app to get, to get the cash app. Uh, th this may seem like a silly question, but is there like a, a ETF that has like, I don't know. I mean, of course it's not considered ETF, but where you can buy like multiple uh, blockchains in one or no? They have a uh, Grayscale. I don't know if you've seen the commercials from CNBC. Grayscale is trading Bitcoin, but it's a, it's a, you can buy it as an ETF of stock. But you know, I was actually looking for it to be on the chain, but the, the, the nope, it's not on the chain yet. So you can actually buy it as an ETF. I think a lot of a lot of wells may be into that. I, I've been seeing that the, it's been going up. Yeah, we can look at it. Okay, word. I'll check that out. Appreciate you. Okay. Look at grayscale. The GPTC, is that right? Yeah. I just threw an article in the uh, the chat because it looks like um, th that's this is an opportunity for institutional money to come in. Uh, the S and P is pretty much creating a, a cryptocurrency indexes starting in twenty twenty one. So the groundwork is being laid now. Nice. Yeah, so it, it's time. They recognize it. They, it's been tested, man. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. It's just a matter of when. And I think everybody, they're getting into position, right? They're getting into position. I heard Na Nancy Pelosi talking about, she was speaking, she was talking about a digital dollar. You know, so it, it's coming. We're already in the digital phase. You know anything about the Facebook Libra coin? I've heard about that. And I think what Mark Zuckerberg, he's trying to do, um, I think initially it was for like uh, just to get things on Facebook, but I think he's trying to kind of make it like back the dollar, kind of like I guess kind of like a currency now. So I think that's going to be huge when he he dropped it. I think that come out January, if I'm not mistaken. So, but this is grayscale. You can kind of look at grayscale, look at their charts. And um, some you can kind of buy if you're interested into the ETF. Uh, it's like it's going down, going up. You know, what I mean, look like it's falling on Bitcoin. Bitcoin got a little dip right now. So, oh no. Yeah, G, uh, GBTC is a one to one to BTC. It's the exact same thing. Yeah. Oh, nice. Just on the uh, just on the equity market. That's all. Yeah. So it's taking off. That'll be something. That's something good to get into as well. If you don't want to buy the Bitcoin, buy like an ETF, it's ETF here. Appreciate you. I appreciate y'all. No problem, King. Any more questions? What about Trust Wallet? Trust Wallet, is that, uh, um, Actually, another ledger, kind of simple, similar to a ledger. I haven't haven't heard of it. Yes, yeah, someone somebody sent me um some crypto, some Bitcoin on Trust Wallet. They told me to download Trust Wallet and sent ten dollars worth of Bitcoin on there. Hmm. So I don't know. Look together. Okay, so it's, I guess it's similar to it's another app. Well, it's a lot of apps popping up. I don't know all the apps, but it's a lot of them popping up now that crypto has, has arrived and it's here. So everybody want to get their fair share and their cut. So I guess there's an app. You might need to download and get that 50 bucks now. <laughs> you probably can. Um, they probably have a, you know, your bank card or bank or something to remove, you get to take it off if you're going to take it off or leave it. Good. Any questions? Any more? All 
I guess we're good. So I, I have one last question for you, Montrez. So um, now that you've been in the, um, the business of buying your coins, which ones going forward and with the information you know now, would you be more invested in than the others? Um, I like Ethereum because Ethereum is right behind. That's like the, you know, that's like the, the granddad, you know what I'm saying? A little dad, you know, behind the Bitcoin. Um, I like Ethereum. I like, um, like I said, I like Ripple XLM. I'm going heavy in them. Um, I like Tron. Tron is a good one. Um, Cardino, I'm, I'm invested in. I have a few others that I actually invested in, but I'm 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 following them hard. But you know, as I as I um as I get information, because I'm I'm in I get information about cryptocurrency, so I'll kind of as as we go along, I drop some in the chat, um, in our Telegram group, and we can just let you know what's what's hot or not, and you can kind of look at the utility or the, the the white paper, and see if it's a go for you, but those what I'm that's what I'm going with right now hard I just believe in ripple I just think ripple is it's about to pop I mean we're talking about Bitcoin but what other other coin are they talking about now so I think it's just a matter of time it actually shot up to three dollars one time um it's just a matter of time of you know when it's gonna pop so it, yeah. I, I heard a story of a guy he bought like um he had a million crypto coins of ripple i think he got it under i don't know maybe maybe under uh, 10 cents or something penny and penny and penny and pennies but you know ripple had shot up at three dollars one time so you know, i can show that let me see if i can show that here and i have seen while you're trying to bring that up i've seen this animation of basically the frequency of XRP coming into the United States and all the other uh, continents. And I was like, oh yeah, it's about time that XRP take off. It was just like a light wave of the transactions. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be real, real big. Yeah, I just think it's a, it's a matter of time. Um, I showed you the commercial, you see it. Y'all, I, my thing is, I mean, I'm not asking you to buy it. I'm not telling you to buy it, but you got to look at it. Look at the partnerships, but it's, it's, it's a lot of things behind the scene um, with it. So look at the partnerships that it has created. Um, it's something, they're talking about something. And when it go, when the whales put their money into it, it's gone. Just don't. Don't get left behind. That's all I can say. I just, I believe in it. Um, so I can't, I can't. Let me see if I can, let me pull that up again. I'm going to show you the chart for a ripple. Visa just um, partnered with Ethereum but I didn't read into it to understand how that might affect the, uh, the stock price or the, the coin price. Bit. Visa. Visa. Wow. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of partnerships um, with from my man. And as they go, it's gonna, it, people gonna start, people loading up right now. I know a lot of people, they loading up. I know people ripple with, 10,000, 20,000, like 30, you got people 50. It's loading up. I mean, like I'll tell you the story. Yeah. When it was up under that that percentage, when I like the guy he, he was telling the story and it shot up to three dollars, right? He sold it before that. Just imagine if it shot up to three dollars, he would have cashed out. He multi-millionaire. Like, like, that's crazy. Bro, I, had, I I was one of them people. I had the bag. I, I got Whoa. in there. 40 cent when that thing shot up to three and some change. I was like, oh, let me let me hold it because you know, I'm being greedy, thinking it's gonna go higher, but then that thing just crashed. <laughs> I've been holding the bag ever since. But I don't know, but your point is kind of like, man, I'm thinking I'm gonna just hold on to it because I think it's it still has a lot more growth in it. 
So yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And the projections. Come again. We talk about the taxes on it. The taxes? Um, um, you know, I never got a I never sold. Like I never I'll do I'll send and receive like Bitcoin and put money on it, but I really haven't I, sold anything. I'm not too sure of the taxes. They're gonna see. It. I'm sure Coinbase is gonna keep track of that. You work over, you get over a certain amount and cash out. Yes, yeah, yeah. They treat it the, the exact same way as they do stocks. They will send you a. Um, they do report it to the IRS. All your transactions. I think. Um, I think it's over anything over twenty thousand. You know, they they definitely gonna report that. But yeah, if you if you buy like if you bought some you know Bitcoin today and sold it tomorrow, then yeah, the government they want they cut. There you go. But just keep that in mind. Especially if you're using something like Coinbase, because they definitely going to, um, you know, send that information over to the IRS. They definitely so you buy and transact, but you don't sell to avoid taxes. You see, my thought is, though, they got the ATMs. So if I can go and deposit. You know, how would they really, I, I don't know the trends that I haven't used the Bitcoin ATM yet. So I don't know how that, or how they would keep track of that. Um, so, I, I mean, because if I want to, let's say if I, I convert on my, from here and convert them into Bitcoin, I guess I could possibly use that web address, use my address, Bitcoin address from that um, Bitcoin ATM and take money out. Will they know? I don't know yet because I haven't really took anything out. So that answer your question. Any more questions? So, I mean, I'll just leave with this. So we know what Bitcoin can do. We know um, we know the blockchain. Um, I think it's been tested. And I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not a financial investor of all financial um, um, advisor, but you know, it's a lot of talks. It's a lot of talks about crypto. And you can take that with a grain of salt and do what you want to do. Um, just do your research on it and, you know, look into it and just look around it. You know, all these coins out here, utility, these technologies, they have fun. They have leadership, great leadership. Ripple has great leadership. Um, it's just like, a, it's kind of like a stock company. So, you know, they have their leadership, CEOs, um, um, and their fundamentals basically on that coin. So this, even if you're not going to buy for yourself, I mean, we, we, we got another hundred years when it won't be any more mining for Bitcoin and just stops, which is, you know, what, what would happen then? Would it be hold as much value? I mean, would it be valuable? I, I mean, I seem to think so. Um, I just say, I mean, even do it for your kids. You know, a couple of coins around. I mean, here and there, a few dollars here and there on some coins. And get lucky and hit the jackpot. So, and that's it. That's all the questions. I guess we can close up if anybody else have anything. Thank you so much. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. You're welcome, Kane. Thank you, bro. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you. Definitely appreciate it. I mean, did y'all get value out of that? Yes. <laughs> definitely did. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure bring some value, man, is put get get everybody aware and you know, see what's going on. Because a lot of people are blind about this industry. So, you know, just peek at it. You never know. I just don't, you know, I try to share it. You don't want people left behind. Yeah, they do pop. Definitely appreciate you, Martrez. Appreciate you coming through and dropping that for the for the for the group. Uh, if anybody don't have no more questions, then we're gonna just head out of here. 
All right, everyone. Have a good weekend. All right, you too. Appreciate y'all coming. Thank you.